right, so in my project here, I already placed down some markers, so I know where to put the text. Now I'm gonna make three new layers for the text. Go to the Media Generator tab and find Prototype Tiler. If you don't have it, you need to go to Options, Preferences, Deprecated Features, and enable it here. I'm gonna use the Centered preset. Just put in your text here. You can see the font I'm using here. The text looks kind of boring now, so we're gonna add some effects to it, like a crop shadow. And I'm gonna change the shift X and Y so the shadow is closer to the text. And then also increase the opacity a bit. Then we can also add some glow. I'm using S glow. Let's turn this down a bit. Raise. You don't have to add this, this is just just if you like how it looks. And then finally we can add some sort of texture like fractal noise or texture flux. You can try both and see which one you like best. I'm using fractal noise. Just change the noise color to white. And it should look something like this. Then I'll just copy this to the other layers. And I'll put two of them on the same layer because I want them to have the same position. But also they won't be showing at the same time. Then just change the text here. Now that we have the text ready, we can make three more layers. One for each movement here. On the first marker, I want it to zoom in here. And on the second one, move to the side. And on the third one, it will zoom out. So I need three layers for that. Then just select the top layer and go down to the bottom one. Hold shift and click on it to select all of the layers. Then if you don't have this button here, you need to go to more, edit visible button set and then show all. Then I'll just click on this three times because I want three parent layers. Then we also want to change the compositing mode. Just click on this one, then choose, choose a 3D source alpha. And do the same for the parent compositing mode. Okay, so now we can start positioning the text. So, so I'll just go here to the first layer, go to the go to track motion, click here to create a keyframe, and then delete the first one so it doesn't like animate it. Just stays the same position all the time. You can just you can just position it however you want. Depends on your scene. And then we can also add some rotation to the text so it doesn't look that boring. Like this. And now we can start doing the camera movement. Just go up to the first parent layer and click on the parent motion button. Make sure you actually click on this and not this one. Because this will only affect this one layer and the other one will affect all of the layers underneath here. 
So click on the parent motion, go one frame before the marker, click here to create a keyframe, delete the first one, go three frames forward. And then I'm gonna zoom in on this text here. You can just put in the text position here also. Doesn't have to be the exact position, just, just somewhere close. Then I'm also adding some rotation here. You can just exit out of that. I'll lower the quality so it doesn't lag that much. Then to make it look better, we're just gonna double click here to create a keyframe. Then go five frames back. Move this keyframe over here. Go one frame forward, double click to create a new keyframe. Do the same here. Five frames forward, one back, new keyframe. And now that we have all of the values we wanna use, we're just gonna position the keyframes. So we'll go two frames back from this. Move this one over here. Then go four frames back. Place this one over here. Do the same here, so just two and four. You can change the distance between the keyframes depending on how slow your how slow your song is. This part is like really fast, so I need to have them pretty close together. And make the first two slow fades and the, these two fast fades. It should look like this. Then for the second movement, just open up the second parent layer. Go one frame back, new keyframe, delete this one. Three frames forward again, and then change the position. And I'll add some rotation here also. And we just want to do the same, so make a keyframe here. Five frames back, new keyframe. Five frames forward, one back, new keyframe. Two and four here. Just exactly the same as we did here and change the fades and it should look like this then the final one this one will be a, a bit different since, since this part of the song is a bit slower but the start is still the same and now I want to zoom it out since I zoomed it in 750, I'll also zoom it out 750. Then just change this so it doesn't show anything outside of the screen. Yeah, something like this. And then just start the same way. But this time you can see that when this movement like stops, the other one begins. We wanna, we wanna start this movement 
a bit earlier than that. So there's like always, always movement here. So I'll just put it a bit before the other movement ends. And then here, there's like a lot of space here. So I'll do double, so one, two, three, four, and then, then eight frames here. So this part is a bit slower than the rest. So yeah, something like that. And then finally, if you wanna like add, wait, I, for, I forgot. You can see how this text just suddenly appears here. So you can either add like a text animation or fade it in with opacity. I think I'll just do it with opacity this time. So this looks a bit better. And then if you wanna add transitions, like from and to the to the typo, you need to make a new new layer, and it has to be 2D this time because you can't add blur curves to 3D layers. So I'll just do a quick zoom out here at the start. It's a bit annoying to make transitions on the whole track, but still the same. So yeah, now we have a zoom out here. And then if you want to add motion blur to it, you need to open up a new project. Because if you put like RSMB on on 3D layers, or if you have a 3D layer in the edit, then you then it'll just mess up the whole motion blur and it'll blur everything all the time. All right, so I just opened up a new project. Now you just want to find the project file you used for the typo and drag it into this project file, like so. And now it, now it'll look like this instead. And since everything is on a 2D layer, the RSMB will work like it normally would. So just find RSMB and add it. You can copy my settings if you want. I recommend keeping the blur amount pretty low, like 25 or maybe even lower. But yeah, now it should look like this. And I also wanna just quickly mention that I'm selling the project file for the edit at the start, the Without Me Vesper remake. So you can find that on my payhip, I'll, I'll leave a link for it in the comments. I'll also link the full, the full edit, since I couldn't show the full one at the start because of, because of copyright. But yeah, that's everything for this tutorial. If this helped you at all, leave a like and you can also let me know what type of tutorials you want me to make in the future, like if you want more 3D ones or tutorials on like Whisper inspired effects. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one, bye.